Dana Rollins and big thoughts from her briefly as well. Honorable, many thanks. You're live on TV3. First off, perhaps you want to tell Ghanaians or remind Ghanaians again why it is important that the minority are the ones leading the sports as this time round. The minority in Parliament represents half of the population of Ghana. But here, we are speaking not just for the half of the population, we are speaking for the entire population. For those who do not have a platform on which to express their complete disappointment and dissatisfaction with the status quo. We are seeing levels of corruption that are mind-boggling. But what is sad is the po lack of political will to do what it takes to set us back on the right path. And as a responsible minority, we are not waiting to come to power before we do what we have to do. We are taking advantage of what is available to us by the Constitution to let this government know that we are not happy and we're not going to sit down in silence. We know the pain that people are feeling on the ground. Businesses are closing down and moving to other countries. People's businesses are just, just getting completely destroyed. People who are in government agencies, who are doing their right work, who are trying to make sure that the public purse is being protected, are rather being persecuted and being vilified. These are not the things that reflect a good democracy. What we are doing here is to protect our young democracy. We are only 30 years old since the Fourth Republic. And we have a vested interest in protecting the Fourth Republic because this Fourth Republic was born under the NDC. So if there is a government now that does not care about the future of this country but only of themselves, we are here to let them know that we will not sit here and allow them to use technicalities within the so-called rule of law to undermine the very pillars of good governance that got them here in the first place. It is sad to see that the state is actually using the law to undermine the rights of its citizens. Which is, which is the roots to which you had agreed upon uh, in wanting to express the anger towards the Bank of Ghana and the losses register? Well, I think it's ironic that um, when uh, President Akufuado was in opposition and trying to come to power, he and his um, his uh, people found it fit to disregard the Flagstaff House as a security zone when they went on the Occupy Flagstaff House. But today, as we are proceeding on a very peaceful demonstration, we're being told that the Bank of Ghana is a security zone. Oh, well and good. But it won't stop us from speaking out about what we are not happy with, with what's happening in this country. It's a disgrace. And this country, having been the blueprint for which a lot of countries in Africa actually made the, the constitutions, actually have the democracies that they are now enjoying, to see that we have rolled so far back and that one government is actually heartbreaking. They, they, make the, they make the argument, and they make it quite strongly, that yes, there's been difficulties, yes, there's been challenges, but things are beginning to turn. The finance minister, some, I'll say a month ago, in an open letter, six page, when the, the call for the BOG governor to resign was upset that he has been through thick and thin with the BOG governor. In fact, the BOG governor has made a lot of sacrifices to ensure that the country is where it is today and that we haven't crumbled any further. If anything at all, we should allow him the time and the opportunity to steer the affairs of the country out of the current difficulties we find ourselves in. That's the argument of the current finance minister. The same finance minister who refused to resign and who at a whole censure motion and the whole procedure that happened after that used technicalities to remain in place is the one who's telling us that someone else should not be asked to resign. You know something? We're all here in Ghana. If people are pretending like they don't know that this country is on its knees, all well and good, but you cannot deceive the man on the street, the woman who is sitting in the market with her table of provisions sitting in mud because money that was supposed to be used for re-engineering of drainage in Greater Accra was realigned to COVID. The COVID expenditure, which we are still trying to figure out the details of, 200 million US dollars given to Ghana for the re-engineering of our, our, and our drainage system wasn't done. This year we are seeing levels of flooding we haven't seen before. Those people who are being affected because someone sitting somewhere else saw fit to redirect funds that were actually supposed to alleviate the suffering of our most vulnerable. And we're supposed to sit down and accept it and wait for them? Of course. Of course people like that can say we should wait. 
because they are not feeling the pain. They are not feeling the terrible economic impact of what they have done to the people of this country. Is, is it a sense you get that there's a level of detachment from the government and the realities being faced by the ordinary Ghanaian? Because you mentioned flooding and Klote Kole is your constituency. Anytime it rains, the Odo drain is, the last time it rained about two weeks ago, it overflew its, its banks amongst other things and people were affected. The sense is that there's a level of detachment from reality of the ordinary Ghanaian? Well, it must be more than detachment. Frankly, I'll bring it down to absolute cruelty because when you can see the reality of what happening, what is happening and you can actually tell people that things are getting better, then I don't know which universe that you are living in. Luckily, we are here on this bridge. If you just look over the water, you will see that the Odor Channel is silted up so high that the capacity that it should have has been reduced by more than half with so much water coming down from the mountains and the rest of Accra. When dredging is not being done, proper desilting is not being done, there's lack of proper waste management, there's lack of coordination between the assemblies, and you are telling us that everything is getting better? I don't think so. Oh, I thank you very much for speaking to us. That's the Honorable Zanetta Rollins. She is the Member of Parliament for Clotet Corley as well.